everybody, it's Michael Finkley with The Michael Finkley Show. And I'm Nicole with Conversations with Nicole. You can join me Wednesdays at 9 a.m. on all of my streaming platforms. Well, Nikki, don't forget about The Michael Finkley Show, Mondays, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the CTR Media Network. Join okay. us! Hey, my name's Greg McBride. I'm a writer and movie producer, and you are watching The Michael Finkley Show. Are you looking for a show full of joy, comfort, and laughter? Well, watch The Michael Finkley Show, Mondays, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on the CTR Media Network, YouTube, and all podcast platforms. Next, Finkley, two-time Billboard artist and songwriter Will is here. Talks about his birthday celebration single release happening March 7th. Plus, Paul Olenek is back with us, Fink fam. We talk about his brand new project, The Flush, and the Oscars. Monday. My next guest, he is a two-time Billboard artist. He's a writer. He's a producer. And the list continues and goes on because he's he has so many gifts and talents under his belt. He is, of course, Will. Hi, Will. Hey, what's going on? What's up? What's everybody at the Michael Sinkley Show. I hope everybody's doing well. Yeah, man. Oh, we in here, man. We, you're here. You're here. Yeah. You're here, and you're doing some incredible things, sir. When I, saw, when I first saw your name, I wanted to do Will. That's why I'm not Because. What you did, Mike? He said. Oh, exclamation With point. the point. You got to hit the point. <laughs> my That's my... what I wanted to do. I was like, I it. It go. I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it. I ain't got to put a little. That's what, that's what the exclamation is about, baby. It's about a little pizzazz. You got to put a little. You got to put a little spice on that thing. I'm like, I ain't mad at it. And you did. <laughs> And you did, and you did. But I'm telling you, once I was on these Instagram streets and we found you, I'm like, yeah, we got to get this brother on because your sound is so unique and different. And it brings something new and rich to the genre of music that you're, that you're a part of. So was music always a part of your life? Yeah, man, definitely. Um, definitely for the most part, man. I have been in the music space, man, really since... I can't I can't say that I've been like so deep in the music thing super early. Um super early it was more so just about like my so my dad and my sisters used to sing. I'm the youngest of three. Okay. And uh, my dad and my sisters used to sing and my dad used to bring us down to the I tell the story all the time. My dad used to bring us down to the basement. He had a little studio back then, you know, and like, you know, back in that time, you know what I'm saying? It was uh having a home studio was very like, whoa, like how you got a home studio? That part. My dad, he had a home studio, and we'd be down there, and he'd ask my sisters to sing a part to me, could sing this part, pretend to sing this part. I'd be like, Daddy, what part you want me to sing? <laughs> and he'd be like, nah, bro, you too young. And so I would go on the other side of the basement, um, and we had, you know, back then we had VHS. So I had a VHS tape that I would pop in with Michael Jackson's greatest hits, and I would just perform and sing to all of those records. And then... You know, I just started to get a, uh, I just started to get a, a, the bug for for music, and then I took a big break from music for a long time, um, uh, and just focused on uh, on my athletic abilities because uh, I was a three sport athlete uh, when I was growing up. Played basketball, baseball, football. I even ran track. I, you know, not super uh, super. I didn't love track, but you know, I ran track. I, I even pole vaulted, believe it or not. Could you believe me? I was I was out there on the pole vault. Oh, wow. Killing it, killing it, killing it. Because I was only, I was so strong. I was the only kid my age that could bend the pole. You know, in ball and pole vaulting, you got to be able to bend the pole mm. in order to project yourself. So I was like the only kid in my age group that could bend the pole. So I was just killing. I was just eating people alive. It was crazy. Um, 
So I was focused on sports and then uh and then I got to college. So in high school I got hurt. And when I, and I got hurt pretty bad um and kind of stopped wanting to play um you know really cuz my back it was a back injury. And then when I got to college I was just like, man, I can't be a regular student. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> like I need to do something after school. Like I need to be doing something. And so um man, I just kind of kept running into all these different musicians and and talking to them about music and I always had the love and a bug for music just just kind of escaped my mind for a little while that it might be for me I was like man I'm gonna be you know three three four star athlete I, I don't care I, I'll go give me a cool little scholarship and go on about my business um but man that just led to that just led to me going out and performing everywhere around Houston Texas that's where I'm from and I would perform everywhere and get an opportunity to just do my thing. And man, the first like two times I performed out out and about in the city of Houston, I got such a great um, uh, response that I, I kind of was like, "Okay, well, hold on now, hold on now." <laughs> I said, "This might work now. Let me let me try this again." I put my foot back out there. Shout out to my homeboy Chris Mitchell, man. I don't know if y'all ever seen that. He blowing up on TikTok. He's a saxophone player. He's the one who drug me, drug me out. He'd be like, Will, come on, bro. I'm telling you, you good. You kill these nightclubs. And I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Nah, come on. He brought me out. And and he would let me, he would play his set. And then he'd be like, all right, I'm bring my friend Will out here. He's gonna sing two songs. And I'll go out there and sing like So High by John Legend and and Before I Let Go and Tear the House Down. And they was like, oh my God. So that's kind of how I got. That's how kind of how I got the bug, man. I started getting into this thing. I got that. I got that drug on me, and I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't escape. <laughs> I yeah, couldn't I, escape. I say it's been working for you though, and don't escape it. Please don't. Please don't I, escape it. I'm, I'm sticking with it, brother. Yeah, I'm stick with it. it. Stick with it. How did your life experiences prepare you for the moment that you're in now? Ooh. Man, you know that's that's really interesting that you would that you would ask me how my life experiences prepared me for the moment that I'm in now. Man, I just I just got done doing a show, one of some of, one of the biggest shows that I've ever gotten a chance to do. And I was talking to one of the guys at the agency, and he says to me, he says, "Man, isn't it interesting how God will just align things even when you don't expect it? Like you know, when they when when people say, man, don't quit because it's just on the other side, it really is just on the other side. And I ain't come here to preach now, but I'm just telling you. But that say that word one more time. <laughs> Someone needs to hear, but including it's me. On the other side. Mm -hmm. When it's on the other side, you you sometimes you don't know it's on the other side, but if you push and you press and you continue, it's gonna be waiting on the other side for you, I promise you. And in this particular case for me, um, man, it was just on the other side and and so a lot of these uh, life experiences that I've that I've been through, um, they really led me to exactly where I was today. And 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 to give even more in depth, it was just the ability to to stick with things, to to be faithful, to to un, to to rely on not necessarily myself, but to just to rely believe in what God gave me. Um, and the ability that he gave me to to think through things, to have the abilities that I have, to understand how this game works, all of those things um, came from the myriad of, of trials and tribulations and stresses that I've gone through in order to get just to to this point in my career. Man, it's been a tough tough journey. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you. I don't know if you dug into it, but. Uh, you know, I lost. Uh, I I used to be married. For those that 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 may or may not know, I used to be married. I got divorced in 2016. Uh, right after that, right after I got divorced, a month after that, my grandfather, who was like my rock, I was like my my ride or die, my my guy, my mother's uh, father, he passed. And then a year later, my aunt, who I who I was uh, who helped raise me on my mother's side, she passed. The next year, my grandmother, my mother's mom, who helped raise me, she passed. That was in 2018. In 2019, uh, the cancer that my mother had been in remission for for seven years came back, and in 2020, it, it you know it took it took her home. Um, so I lost my whole village 
from 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 2016 to 2020, and uh, and I really, uh, you know how they say, I, man, I feel like, I feel real churchy right now, Mike. You got me feeling do churchy it, for some do reason. It, do it, do it. You know, I feel like the story of Job, man. It was like, man, literally, my whole family was taken from me. You know what I'm saying? Just just about like I lost my wife. She, you know, she took my daughter out the house. Now, granted, I got my daughter now, but she took my daughter with her. Lost, you know, the four people that raised me within a matter of years. And it was like, man, it was just kind of one of those coming to Jesus moments, get on my knees and like pray, like, whoa, whoa, what is going on? You know, but all of that led me to just make the decision in my head. OK, you know, we got to do things a certain kind of way because it's us. It's just us now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and uh, and it really just led me to this point, this position now, where I've I've been able to be a successful entrepreneur, a business owner. Um, you know, this industry is not easy to move and shake through, uh, but it gives me the it gives me the drive, it gives me the the energy to move through it. You know, so I know that was a long winded answer, Mike. Oh no, no, it, it needed <laughs> to be said, right? It needed to be said. Hey, um, and you said something that really stuck out to me that's going to lead me to the next question as well. You said that, you know, you were, you were just, you're going, you know, trials of life happened, right? The other side, right? The other side. Sometimes to get to the other side, it takes 10 years, yeah. 20 years, whatever they may look like and sound like to get to that side. What kept you going? Even when life said, I'm here, I'm at your door. Mm. What kept you going? Man. Oof. I would say three things. God, um, my my desire to be uh, to be a good and a good and providing father to my children. Um, and you know something that my mother told me right before she passed. She said uh, she said to me. She said, William, I I could have never imagined having a son like you. Um, and every time I think about who you are, I'm mind blown. She said, don't ever quit what you're doing. Whatever it is that you're doing, she's like, definitely not not the music. She said, don't quit. Keep it pushing no matter what you do. I want you to keep it pushing. Promise me that you're never going to stop pushing. And uh, man, even even in, a, even, even in a dark time when, you know, I would hear that voice and, and be like, all right, man, we, got, we still got to push. We still got to push. So I think those are the three things that, that come to mind when you, when you ask me that question. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to rock with on that one. <laughs> we have a concert that's coming up as well. A birthday. Let's talk about it, Mike. You know, March 7th. <laughs> It's right around the corner. What what's what's going on? What's happening? Give us give us details. What's going Ooh, on? Man, listen. Let me tell y'all one thing that I don't play about, and it's that stage. If y'all if y'all don't come and see me live, y'all not doing yourself justice. I mean, my records. I love my records, but my records are meant to translate to the stage because I do that stage like I feel like very few people do. Um, so, um, I'm just going to put on a good show. So I'm putting on a show for my birthday. I'm releasing a single, I'm releasing a single that day as well. And that single is going to be called till we land. And that's, uh, oh yeah, you're going to love it. Mike, I'm going to give you the sneak peek. I'm going to give you the early listen. I'm going to give you the early listen. When we get off the interview, I'm going to send it to you, man. I want to, I want to get your thoughts on this one. But, uh, uh, till we land is a single that we're going to be releasing at that same time. Um, it's a birthday concert. Uh, after the concert, we're going to do an after party for a couple of hours, R&B themed after party. So I want everybody to come up, feel sexy. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be on some nice, you know, player vibes. You know what I'm saying? Come with your fedoras and your gold. I got family wife. Oh. Come on, man. <laughs> you ain't, it ain't got to be a fedora, but you know what I'm saying? Throw you on a gold. Throw you on some gold, on some gold chains or something like that. And we're going to be on some real player vibes, man. But, um. March 7th is going down at Smith's Old Bar in Atlanta at in the music room. That's the big room up top. Um, we've got uh, Steezo TM. Uh, for those of y'all that don't know Steezo TM, Steezo TM is a rapper singer out of Atlanta. Uh, man, she calls herself. Uh, oh man, I forget what I forget what she calls herself. I don't want. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it the, the wrong way. Uh, but she. Oh, she calls herself the stud icon. The stud icon. 
but she's dope. We used to be in a management team together or on a management group together. And she was like my, my best friend in that little group. Cause she was just always like, she really about this, this here that we do. And I've always respected her for that. So she's, uh, so I had the opportunity to bring her in and do the show with me. So she's coming. Um, uh, Chevy, my, uh, our homegirl Chevy, yo Chevy, she's going to be killing it. She's, uh, she's like, does a lot of Afro beat, a lot of Afro beat, a lot of R and B, man. She's real fun. She comes with the dancer. She's got some great records that Chris and her put together. Uh, my homeboy, Chris Davis is putting it together with me. That's DFD music. Um, man, they've got thousands of records out. I think they've got like 10, 10 to 12 and I could be calling it wrong, but they got like 10 to 12 billboards under their belt, two of which they did with me. Um, Oh, man, who else? Gigi, Gigi De Niro. Uh, she's uh, she's over at Streets 94.5. She's going to be hosting the show with us. Uh, she's one of the uh, VJ or uh, she's one of the, the radio hosts over there at Streets 94.5. She's going to be hosting our show. So y'all bring out the whole Streets 94.5. You know what I'm saying? We're going to put them on, on some R&B that day. <laughs> and then we got my band, Willing to Exclamation, man. We don't, like I said, we don't play about that stage, man. We don't play about that stage. It's going to be four backline, four instrumentalists, three singers. We got dancers. It's going to be a nice, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. You got to get your ticket. You got to buy You got to buy your ticket today. Stop playing and come and see an amazing show. We actually do. We got meet and greets, too, if you guys want to come and meet the people. Yeah. we gonna. If you want to come and meet me, if you want to meet Steezo and Chevy, we're doing meet and greet tickets. So that's a part of the package. So when you guys go to the website, you'll see the meet and greet tickets. Um, that includes you coming early. You can come early. You can come take pictures with us. We got the 360 uh, camera that's going to be up there with us. Um, what else? Oh, we got we got the gift bags that we're giving out to the people on the meet and greet. So we got meet and greets that you're going to get uh, Will branded merch. You're going to get Chevy branded merch. You're going to get Steezo branded merch. And a nice little tote bag. We got all that for y'all as well for the meet and greet folks. Man, what else can I say? DJ in the house. That's it's gonna lot. be fire. It's a lot, man. I, it's for my birthday. We gotta do it big. My name is, you know, I'm saying I'm Will with the exclamation, not Will with the period. You know what I'm saying? It's it's big. It's big over here. We that gotta part. go. That, that part. part. That every, part. Every time you say your name, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> just gonna do it. Yes, sir. <laughs> or you can yell. Or you can yell. Well, like some people do that too. <laughs> I guess it's the excitement of it all. Okay. Yeah, That's man. Yeah, okay. Man. What does the next biggest dream look like for you? What does Ooh. the next level look like for Will? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's a oh man. What is the next level for me, man? I, I could tell you, but some of it, some of it is my private, it's my private secrets. I got to hold on my private goals. I got to hold on to, cause you know, you never, you never want to put all that stuff out there into the ether just yet. But uh, even though I know you mean you have good intentions, brother. Uh, I think that, man, what would I, I think, you know, I'm really, I'm a, I'm a, I'm really a businessman first. So I have goals, I have goals on numbers to hit. You know, you know what I mean? And there's a certain number that I want to hit. And I think that'll be the next, that'll be the next big goal. And and when I say number, I'm not necessarily talking about streaming numbers. Um, what I realize about this game is that you know the money is really made on tour and and merch and and brands and sponsorships and stuff like that very little of it is made off of residuals for your records um so you know my excuse me my um my goal is not really not even really to get like a million streams or you know two million streams or anything like crazy like that i really have no necessity or for that um if it happens great you know but i realized that it's really just a stepping stone it's really just a product for what's to come you know that puts me in position to uh you know to get a bigger uh to get a bigger licensing check from a movie you know from getting a song in a movie or something like that um so i think for me it's a it's a certain number uh monetarily and it's a certain number of um 
of trackable fan fanship, if that's the right word. That I'm, you know Are you saying? afraid of the next level? Man, you know, you you aren't the only person that asked me that question. Damn, Mike, you really, you trying to, you trying to, okay, I see what you're doing here. You're on your journalist vibe, okay. <laughs> Am I afraid of the next? I think, I think at one point, I think at one point, ooh, man, that's a loaded, uh, now that I'm really unpacking that, I think that at one point I really was, uh, I really, I really did not feel, like I felt so ready for the next level. I felt super ready for the next level. And then when I got to the next level for that level, I realized I was not ready for that level. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and then I and then I kind of got to the point of like, man, I, maybe I'm not ready for the next level. And then it kind of turned back around and it was like Man, I saw I, I saw myself in a lot of different positions and a lot of different places that I didn't expect to see myself. It just kind of looked up one day and was like, "Man, I'm hold on, wait a minute, <laughs> wait, a, right. wait a minute, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm at the next level." You know what I'm saying? And and without even realizing it. Um. So. So to answer your initial question, am I scared of the next level? Um. I'm not scared of anything that God has for me. <laughs> say all that to say oh. I ain't scared of nothing that God oh. has because whatever he whatever he brings my way I just know like I've seen it enough times in my life uh more times than I more times than I could ex express um but I've seen it enough times to know like he got my back whatever comes is coming because he wants me to be in that position good or bad but it always works for my good at the end of the day. And I've seen it over and over and over and over. I don't even get, I don't even get like, oh my God, I don't even get like that no more. I, it, what's the point? I know, I know it's, it, it might just be like this for the day. It's okay. <laughs> well, let's, let's rock. We gonna, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold my mule until, <laughs> until it's time. And it comes back around every time, man. I'm a master manifester. So. Keep it up. <laughs> uh, look where you are now so if you continue to manifest it's going to get bigger and larger so oh yeah, oh, so, yeah. So, so keep it up so definitely so one more time how can we stream your music yeah. how can we follow you on social media and how can we get tickets for March 7th Ooh, say less <laughs> uh, you can stream my music my uh, my name is Will W exclamation point L L so um you can stream my you can stream my music everywhere and there it goes boom <laughs> you can stream it everywhere on all dsps on amazon music on apple music on um spotify y'all know what time audio mac soundcloud wherever you find music you can find my music at uh w exclamation ll you can find me on all social media at yo that's will that's y-o-t-h-a-t-s we can spell over here we ain't no d-a-t-s over here yo that's will <laughs> i'm a writer i gotta it's gotta be <laughs> yo that's will uh on all social media and you guys can buy the ticket if you find me on social media you can click the link in my bio but you can also go to smith's old bar and that's old with an e i don't know how you know what I'm saying o-l-d-e smith's old bar dot Fresh ticks, T I X dot com. Scroll down to March 7, you'll see me there. Um, but I got the direct link in my bio. So, yo, that's Will, if you guys want to check it out. You should check it out. What's wrong with you? Do it. We are. To be at this Man, show. We are. We are going I to. I better be it. at this show. I Pull up. Let's go. Will, yeah, I appreciate man. you so much, bro. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, thank you for having me, man. It was so much fun, man. It was so much fun connecting with you, bro. I hope to see you at the show. Yes, and, sir. And hey, man, let's stay, let's stay connected, man. Of course, you can't get rid amen. of me now. Hey, amen, amen. And when it's time, we're gonna have you on my podcast too, bro. You gotta, have, you gotta. Let's go. I, I'm with it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm when we start shooting, it. when we start shooting next dates, man, we're gonna have you come. Let's go. Let's make it happen. Big fam, don't go away. Back to you. Hey y'all, I'm artist Billy Stonecipher and you're watching The Michael Finkley Show.
Like a freight train down the fast lane We're coming On the next Michael Finkley Actor, artist, Philip Johnson Robinson is with us Talks about his Broadway debut in The Wiz Plus, actor, artist, Terrell Carter Monday Hello everybody, it's Finkley from the Finkley Experience. We're an educational consulting firm that specializes in first generation education. So we assist students with their college and career endeavors. We train school administrators on the state of first generation students. And also we partner with colleges and universities to assist their first generation population for easy transition from high school to college. So if you're looking for a presenter or a speaker that presents on these topics and so much more, visit our website at thefinkleyexperience.com and learn about all that we do. We're looking forward to working with you. Hi guys, welcome to Awaken. We wanted to serve the city of Mullins. We are church owned and we felt like a coffee shop was such a huge need in the city, in the city of Mullins. There's nowhere for people to just come, get a cup of coffee, sit with friends, maybe do some work on the laptop. And so we feel like it was a service that we could give back to the city. Well, our hope is that people will feel calm, that they'll feel welcome, that it'll be a place where they can come and just clear their mind. We come here twice a day. That's how I get their smoothies, their coffee, their latte, bread paste, delicious. I would love the atmosphere here. If I had time to come and just sit and relax, I would. It's awesome. One thing that I really love about it being here is just the cozy environment. It's so inviting. Um, I can come in here and I can get my schoolwork done, a good coffee and a good meal. Um, but I'm just really thankful that they're here and that I have a good place to go. We're open Tuesday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Awaken Coffee Bar, downtown Mullins. To the Michael Finkley Show. Now, y'all, my next guest, he's been on the show before. He is truly Fink Fam, literally. He is actor, international voiceover artist, impressionist himself, Paul Olinick. How are you, my dear friend? <laughs> friend, it's Barney Rubble. It's not Paul Olinick. <laughs> I'm doing good. I was going to do a little Louis Tully for you here. Okay, Michael. Who does your taxes? It's Louis Tully from Ghostbusters. I can get salmon for $16.99 a pound. That's good financial sense. Okay, who brought the dog? I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Big fam, like, we literally, before we started, he had me rolling. I know he's going to keep me rolling on his show, too. This is by the shirt. Look, the shirt he's wearing. Look, look. Prepare. That's the Ghostbusters shirt I wore, especially to do the impression for you. Okay, think that you want to play Twister after? <laughs> we could do it after the show, eh? Oh, I'm ready. Okay, take off, eh? Beauty, eh? Beauty. That's my brother, Doug. It's Bob and Doug McKenzie. From the Great White North, eh? I cannot. I cannot. Let me ask a question. Okay. How have you been? I have been. I. 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 I have been great. I. I've. Uh, I. I surprised myself in September. I woke up at four in the morning. I said to my partner in bed, "I said I got an idea for a screenplay." I'm writing it right now. And I wrote the treatment within 45 minutes. And uh, and then the script within a week after that. And uh, I can't believe how well it is doing right now. Uh, it's called The Flush. Uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been approved by the Alberta Film Board, uh, the union. And it's going into production in July. And uh, you thought the pandemic was bad. You've seen nothing yet. Wow. Because this is something that you've been working on for a while, right? The ideal. Yeah, of it, right? I had the idea came to me back in 2001. And then I was uh, mulling over the idea. 
Um, you know, I'm used to writing trailers for movies and shows like mm -hmm. Seinfeld, Friends, The X Files, movies for you know big stars like Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, all these people, right? But you know, I've never actually wrote a screenplay. So you know, I wanted to do a screenplay, and and you know, so I challenged myself, and I said, well, you know, I'm going to do it. It's a great idea. It's a great concept. And I even got interviewed by Boston, Massachusetts last week, uh, you know, and New York, New York is interviewing me in March about it. I, I mean, it's going to the Oscars. There's a poster. There's a teaser poster. Um, it's huge. It's going to be huge. It's, it's not going to be a full feature movie, though. It is only a 20 minute movie but it's going to be extremely powerful and have a little bit of humor to it. And well, because I have a little bit, as you know, I have a quirky sense of humor doing all my impressions and everything else. So that's going to translate to the screen. And uh, I think it's going to do unbelievable on the move on the uh, film festival circuits. It's even endorsed by CTV news, which is a national news broadcaster in Canada. Wow. Wow. So just not no give it all away, but when people watch it in the future, uh, what do you want them to get from it? What I what do, do I want I them want to get from it? I want them to think, you know, this should never happen. Let's make sure it doesn't happen. Hmm. And I'm gonna read you a tagline or a synopsis from the, the thing right now. Just give me a second, I'm gonna get that for you. Just give me a second. Uh, this is what the tagline is. This is my best announcer for you, okay? Gotcha. Here it is. Innovative, informative health. The FMC Corporation. Building a healthier Canada. One chip at a time. Now I'm going to read you. I'm going to read you the synopsis of this. Hang on one sec. Just give me a second, Michael. Your time. Uh, I just got to find it here. Uh, just a second. Um, meanwhile, uh, maybe I can do uh, maybe I can do a little uh, impersonation. Oh, here it is. Anyways, this is the synopsis. And you tell me what you think after this, Mike. Gotcha. OK, the year is 2033. Medical records are stored in a chip in an individual's wrists. They provide them with health care throughout Canada. All medical procedures, appointments, and prescriptions are covered by the government since the year 2030 when they first implemented the chip. Ray McIntosh, a Statistics Canada, discovers today a potential problem that could change everything. How does that sound? Does that sound intriguing? Very much so. Well, I, I'm that person that, that likes that type of that type of genre, right? So right. I would say, okay, I will watch it. Yep. Mm hmm A good Friday night. Yep. I sure would. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's yeah, it's uh it's gonna be a little bit of a nail biter, yeah, for sure. For sure. And how have you been? I, I mean, look at you, you're talking to LeVar Burton, you're talking <laughs> to Fantasia. What the heck is happening with you, brother? You are like a you are like the the, the celeb. That's why you're walking the red carpet with me. Oh my gosh, I have been super, super well, fantastic, and like I said, just been watching your journey as well, and I, I tell you, I'm not going to cry, I told myself I was not going to cry when I say this. Like, <laughs> Don't I, cry. Don't I, cry. I thank you so much, um, Paul, I thank you so much for just believing in the brand, believing in the show, believing in me. Um, oh, absolutely, I do, I do, you... You are you're a wonderful host and you are so kind and you're compassionate and you let your faith guide you. And, uh, you know, um, that's what I do as well. Like, I mean, uh, you know, to ground myself, uh, I'm uh, I used to be Anglican. Now I'm Catholic. Mm -hmm. I say the rosary in the morning while I go on my walk. And I say, I pray for humbleness and wisdom. And if money comes with it, well, that's fine. That's what God wants to give me. Exactly. Exactly. Definitely. And I must say, you look great. 
Oh, thanks very much. Oh. You do too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you look great, brother. I want that shirt. I want a Michael Finkley shirt the next time I'm wearing it on your show. Well, this is going to be the thing, though, because we're both going to be at the Oscars. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. And you get it your shirt. So what can we expect? What can we expect? What's what's going on? This will be my first time going. So what can we expect? This is the first time for me, too. Like, I, I'm just honored. My agent asked me to come down, and I was just honored. I was blown away. Um, I was featured last year, as you know, March 18th. Uh, 2023 in Formidable Men magazine. They said I was one of the most renowned world top impersonators. They wrote an article on me. Uh, I, I've got a cover of that. Uh, you know, it's uh, I'm just I'm just blown away. Like I mean, uh, I mean to be promoted as that by an agent, uh, you know, is uh, is mind blowing. And now. To have that uh, down there, I understand there's going to be a banner with with my cover from Formidable Men magazine on it, and there's going to be the poster from The Flesh as well on that, and that's all the doing of my agent uh, in the states, and that's going to be at the gala. So after we walk the red carpet, that's going to be in the background. And that's going to be, you know, I don't know if it's going to be on the big screen or the background or whatever. It's going to be posted somewhere inside the big hall that we're in. And I understand we're going to have, uh, there's going to be the red carpet at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then there's going to be, uh, there's going to be, there's going to be a viewing of the Oscars for a little bit and some awards given away. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be a, a three course sushi dinner. Uh, well, no, three course sushi appetizer, then a, 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 a no, not three course. <laughs> I got this mixed up, Mike. Hang on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, sushi is going to be delivered. And then there's going to be a three course dinner. There's going to be a fashion show. There's going to be over 100 celebrities there. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be cutting from the Chinese theater back and forth between where we are at the Universal Studios Hilton giving away awards, and then there's going to be, like I said, a fashion show, uh, and then there's going to be partying from 10 to midnight. It's it's going to be a long day from a 2 to midnight, day. and we're going to be sitting at the table with, uh, you know, the guy that, that I was telling you that interviewed me from Boston last mm -hmm. week. You're going to meet Vic Santiago, who's a wonderful host as well, just like you. He does a show. And uh, he's going to be there with his son. So I'm going to introduce you to him. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to my agents. I'm going to introduce you to some of my cast who are flying down. Um, yes, uh, Sherry Severs uh, is coming down from Calgary to be at this Oscar event. Um, it's it's going to be huge. It's going to be just a blast. It's going to be connecting uh, we're going to have fun at the table. We're going to do some, imper I'm going to do some impersonations because that's what I do. Uh, you know, that's just the way it is. And it's going to be a blast. It's going to be experience and a half. And you're going to meet people that you can, uh, bring on to your show and some big celebrities. You're going to get some good photo ops. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to spice up your show to the nth degree. Oh, I can't wait. And I thank you again for this grand opportunity. Yeah, I know. You're welcome. You know, you. Uh, it, it's like you say, it, it's, you know, you pay it forward. Somebody does you a favor. You did me a favor by having me on uh, doing some impressions last year. And now I want to return that favor to you. And that's the way it is. And, you know, that's it. The Fink family. I'm part of the Fink family. Far. You are. Oh, uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, from this opportunity, especially with your project happening, where what do you want it to do? Where you where you want it to span? I want it to make you know, and it's not about money, but I want it to do well in all the film festivals from New York to L.A. to Australia to Cannes, Cannes or whatever Cannes, Cannes. Blah. <laughs> Anyways, you know what I mean. I, I I've never pronounced that one right. In Toronto, I wanted to do so well 
that it it sparks it into a full feature film uh you know not just a 20 minute one but one that that is a basis either for a series or for a full fledged movie that's uh with uh multi million dollar budget yeah so i'm i'm hopeful and i think it will and i think it's going to i think it's going to win a lot of awards i you know i'm 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 hopeful and i i you know i I have faith in my work because I have won national and international awards in the past for all of Canada and internationally as an actor, nationally for, for a writer, producer, director of trailers, uh, been, been, uh, been hired by Warner Brothers uh, in Sacramento at one point. Uh, you know, um, these are just some of the things that I've done in my past. And I know what I can do. And, you know, if I set my mind to it and anybody sets their mind to it and works really hard and gives it their A game, they can do it. And don't be afraid to ch chase your dreams. Do it. I mean, you did it with your song. You know, you got your song there. And I even want to work your song into my into my little short. I want it in there. You know, I want it in with the credits. You know what I mean? Uh, if you're willing to sanction it, I want to promote you like you're promoting me. It's it's a give thing. And, and and you know, and it'll be there worldwide for everybody to see, everybody to hear. And, you know, that's how it works. This is how it works in the business. It's not about egos. It's not about being arrogant. It's not about being a prick. It's about, you know, being good and kind, compassionate, and helping your brother out. How can the Fink fam learn more? about The Flush, and also follow you on social media. Uh, the Flush is on Facebook. Right now, there's a Facebook page uh, that's uh, for The Flush. Exactly. You just have to type it in in, in Facebook. Um, under, And you can find uh, 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 myself under Facebook under Paul Nathaniel Olenek. And you'll find the links to The Flush there as well. You'll find articles on it, and uh, the poster is online. So I'm sure if you Google the flush, uh, something will come up. Um, you know, it's just a matter of time. Uh, and also, it will be on IMDb soon in the future. So uh, look for the flush, and the actors will be all on there. There'll be a professional uh, uh, page dedicated strictly to that. And the teaser poster will be there. There's going to be more posters done of it as well in the future. The synopsis you can find online. You can find the tagline online. You can find some of the actors online already. Uh, you just have to you just have to search it out. But it's there. And uh, Michael Finkley, when he promotes this show, will definitely. Uh, I'll give you a copy of the poster, Mike. And you can put up the poster on your on on either this show or on your uh, advertisement that you send out via email, and that would be great. I would I would I would really like that if you could do that for me. Gotcha. Just send it on over. Yeah, I got it. Send I'll it send it on. I'll send it over to you. I'll send you the synopsis, and I'll send you a poster, and I'll send you the tagline for starters, and uh, I'll get you all lined up. Sounds good yeah. to me. Ah, sounds good. Thank you, Paul, for being with us. I appreciate you. No problems. What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Rosero. I am a creative director and choreographer to the stars. Make sure that you tune in to the Michael Finkley Show because he is off C-Chain. I don't know if people still say that, but you need to tune in. Hey, Looking for some of the best soul food right here in Mullen, South Carolina? I promise you, come on down to Garden Alley.
great salad, fabulous, or water gator potato salad, her chicken is fresh, macaroni and cheese is salted to perfection. I haven't found anything that's not great. <laughs> Best we can have. Banana pudding cakes, pies. Yeah. Selection is huge. Uh, Garden Alley is an uh, awesome place to eat. I really love it. Come by and see the amazing staff at Garden Alley, downtown Mullins. On the next Michael Finkley, actor, artist, Philip Johnson Robinson is with us. Talks about his Broadway debut in The Wiz. Plus, actor, artist, Terrell Carter. Monday, 